Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Grace's Path. So the last place we left off, our loving couple had just set sail, so let's see what adventure awaits them, or if we're going to have to wait for the new build on a new episode of Changeling Tale. Check it out. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying something new. <laughs> I'm watching that internet historian video of uh, the engoodening of No Man's Sky, or whatever it's called. Check it out. Alright, let's go in. Jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> As she helps guide the ship between the narrow stone crevice walls, the entirety of my decision strikes me hard. We break free into the open ocean, and all I see before me is water. Vast and featureless water. Its gray color is stark, yes, but also resembles a great blank slate. A chance to start anew. <laughs> <clears throat> It's really something, isn't it? Endless possibilities! It's exciting. Grace's giddiness is contagious. I can't help but share her excitement. It's beautiful in its own way. But what do you think we'll find over the horizon? More water, of course. Happiness, perhaps? Look at me, Malcolm. I'm already happy. She splashes around with delight. And I'll make sure you are, too. Whatever we need, the sea will provide. I'll see to it. The provisions don't concern me as much as the accommodations. Spending week after week upon this tiny raft will be difficult, but it's still a step up from a rat-infested trench dugout. Can you take me beneath the waves from time to time? The view up here is bound to get a wee bit dull after a while. Certainly. Below water and above. We'll stick together. Just be prepared to get wet. She dives under and reappears, shooting a waterfall straight out of her mouth, dousing me at the first of what is sure to be the trip's many soaks. If she is to be my fate, and so be it. This feisty soul, whom I've never been seen happier, my companion on this journey, perhaps my companion for life. Someone who understands me, with whom I can share my troubles and dreams, unfettered, far away from the real world. Whatever uncertainty we felt in our relationship, I believe we can leave behind in our wake, at least for now. And I began to think that we really are headed towards paradise. Alright, Chief Splashy Officer McLeod, anchors away! Look. I turned my head long enough to watch the hills of Scotland become shapes on the horizon. As the wind steers me towards new prospects, one ship to bring me home, another to take me away. The pain I've carried so long, I let it go, going to delight this experience with Grace, to show her and myself, this vacation is just that, a vacation from pain, physical or otherwise. Here goes nothing. Yep, is that it? Yep, ah, uh, god. Nope, yep, oh, mate, ah, ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. No charts, no navigational aids. With just a waterlogged brochure and Grace's instincts to guide us, we begin our journey. At first, we don't stray far from shore. The sight of land on the horizon is reassuring as I practice and refine my sailing skills. Grace steers me clear of shallow rocks, and I steer her clear of other vessels and prying eyes. Ah, oh, they're in Liverpool. I try to steer around most ports as well, for Grace's sake. One exception is a brief visit to the seaside port of the... Of Land of Landudno, where I procure an essential item, finally some proper swimwear. As my confidence grows, so too does the distance we travel from the mainland. We pass the Isles of Scilly, Britain's most southerly point, and I know we are well and truly on our way. Oh wow, they really went off the damn map. Oh my god. From here we sail across foreign waters, and only make landfall to top off my, fre my freshwater supply. When captured, rainfall doesn't suffice. Falling in Grace's wake, the sea is my home now, and this boat, the cubbyhole to which I am confined. Despite its size, I find that the ship has all I need. A strong hull, comfortable cabin, reliable rudder. The kelpie sails straight and true, and I take pride in our restoration. When work is put in, the kelpie reciprocates, and so I continue to work hard controlling the sails and swabbing the deck. Even with just one passenger, I insist the ship stay clean and tidy. As much attention as the kelpie demands, I can see why sailors grow attached to their vessels. Fortunately, it is not my only companion on this journey. Moments hit when I remember when I remember Moby Dick and the passage of a boy lost to the madness of the vast open sea. But Grace, Grace moves alongside like a shadow, my shadow, always there to provide food and comfort. At times she brings me a, she brings me long beneath the waves to explore, to play. These glimpses into her world are short, but a welcome break from life on the surface. Oh, storm. As a number of days grow, we settle into a routine that works for both of us. Our conversations now are not the tales of others, but our own hopes and dreams. 
It really does feel like a fresh start. Yes, still more work than play, but with each passing day we both become enthralled with the idea of what's to come. But paradise awaits. The weather becomes milder. The water turns from murky grey to turquoise blue. Colorful birds that I can't identify fly overhead. Their appearance fills Grace and me with excitement. But there are birds, there is land nearby. It's been weeks since we last saw Terra Firma, and we must be nearing our destination. Grace swims ahead, eager to find her tropical Shangri-La. I'm scanning the line where the sky meets the sea. I swear I recognize land, perhaps even tall trees. But as the heat of the day builds, the horizon becomes obscured by dark clouds. The ocean begins to swell, and the clouds are getting nearer. Keeping my composure, I try to steer right of the ominous weather, but the wind has died down to an eerie calm, leaving me floating helplessly at the mercy of the sea. From the clouds' direction, I see Grace's form skimming, skimming across the waves. She's waving a frantic warning, and I know better than to dally any longer. I spur myself to action, clearing the deck, securing the cabin, and reefing the sails, making them as small as possible. A storm is coming. <clears throat> oh. Oh dear. Scary weather! Oh wow, that is bad weather. The gale arrives quickly with little warning. It brings with it the devouring rains, the heavy pelting drops that won't eat, won't cease. They slick in my grip, make it a struggle to hold on as the kelpie bucks on the top and onslaught of surf. Grace braves the boiling water to steady the hull, angling the front of the ship away from the waves that break and spill over the deck. Even her large body is dwarfed by the enormous sea swells. She strains to hold the kelpie afloat, and I can tell the force tests her strength. <clears throat> a rope snaps and begins to lash fiercely. Just as I snatch it from the air, I wrestle it back from the bottom and back around the tie-down. Another cord rips free. The sails are straining before the full force of the gale. If I don't do something fast, it won't be long before we don't have sails. I jump around the mast and pull the head and move it made sails around, heaving too, trying to fill them with wind on the opposite side. The cloth whips and catches the air, slowing the ship but sending it into a dangerous leeward tilt. I hear Grey shouts as I cling to the mast for dear life. I think I have any control of the ship's fate now is an illusion. I am fully in over my head. The wood I'm holding onto teeters violently. I lift my eyes to the heavens and say a silent prayer to anyone who might be listening. My eye is drawn to a ghostly luminescence at the tip of the mast, a delicate soft glow of violet against the heavy black clouds. It's a captivating phenomenon my grandfather once told me about, and what it pretends. At this moment, the mast I've been clinging to seems more dangerous than the churning waters around us. Grace! Over the howling wind, it's impossible to know if she can hear me. The glow is getting brighter. Arcs of electricity dance about its halo. All at once, a dread I haven't felt since the war overtakes me. Trust my instincts, Douglas said, and make a snap decision. My feet hit the water the moment the lightning strikes. Disorientation. Noise echoing in my ears. It's as if a mortar shell is detonated at my feet and released in, in, in me an immeasurable deluge. My tightening lungs pull me out of the shock. I flail in the water trying to find which way is up. Rain and salt laden air fill my chest as I break the surface and swallow a deep breath. I sputter and kick, struggling to stay afloat. My head whips around to locate Grace in the thick of the rain, but the surf around me is too heavy. I can no longer make out her shape nor my ships, despite their size. I turn just in time to see the massive wave right before it crashes over me. Sploosh! Dead. Not a big surprise. Out to be concluded. Oh my. Save it right there. Alright y'all, looks like we are done right now with Changeling Tale. Alright, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Oh man, how are they going to get out of this? Well, my guess is that she's going to grab him and they're going to take off to a nearby island or something. Oh, man. Oh, man, what a game. I love it so much. All right, so it looks like um, I'm going to be putting... What is it? Uh, Heroes Advent back in rotation, because I, we we, I think we have more of Cody's path to get through. But anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.